Now, as far as the uh, the bridle itself, um, again, we call this the sync bridle, and I called it the sync bridle, S-Y-N-C, because to me it synchronizes all of the action. So the main thing is that basically you end up with this sort of trapezoidal movement on the bridle, so it's no longer static. So what it means is that as you're working one line, things are repositioned instead of letting one part of the line or the bridle go slack. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. The connections from the bottom to the top essentially when you're putting in your brakes you're gonna see a little bit of leverage put back into the top lines right there okay so what that means now is that instead of where we used to hit our brakes and it was all brake and then the top is sort of relinquished let's say you put in the brakes you're also at the same time kind of putting in five to ten percent forward against the ninety percent brake so it makes it a little bit smoother in the transition the other thing about the trapezoidal bridle is that when you do hard dual line pulls the kite tends to be more forgiving. So you can actually do a hard break and pull, and the kite will do a, a wicked spin around one wingtip. Um, let's see here, the limiter. This is our limiter adjustment right here. My favorite spot is the second knot from the inside, or the second from the shortest. Um, so basically, what it's doing is it's changing the distance between the bottom bridle point, I call this the, the bottom deck, and the top deck. So this distance increases or shortens, the smaller that is, or the more we tighten this up, essentially the more it's encouraging a center kite compression like this. The other thing is that when it's shorter, the kite becomes a little bit more responsive. Um, I find that axles and things like that are easier. Also, one input will give me more of a turn than if it was longer. So shorter is a little bit more dynamic and more center compression. Good for the womp style. So if you're down with womp, that's what's gonna work well. If you're not real familiar with the concept of WOMP and loading that sail yet, then expanding that, lengthening that uh, limiter will, will basically make it a little bit easier for the, the old leading edge launch. The other thing too is that it, it, again, like the opposite of what I just talked about, is it will desensitize the turning a little bit. So a uh, big one is in the higher wind. So let's say we've got a full vent and it's reaching that upper wind range, it's like 24 miles an hour, something like that, and we go to make that turn, it turns and it goes, whoa, it's a little bit too responsive. What I would do is lengthen that limiter by one knot at a time, and eventually you get maybe to the last knot and it goes, right? So what we've done is we've kind of stupefied the turning a little bit. Just gave it a little bit to drink and it's like smoother, you know? Um, let's see. So to kind of summate that, um, longer is generally ideal for less sensitivity, a more, let's call it a traditional style of quad flying, and higher wind, where you want that lower sensitivity. And then again, tighter is going to encourage that warmth factor, axles, and, and turn on that responsiveness a little bit more. Um, make certain that, of course, when you attach the bottom line, that it doesn't go on to the limiter. And the easy way that I'm identifying that is that at the bottom bridle point, there's actually two strands. So wherever you attach your line, just make sure that there's two strands going through there. And it's the same at the top. There's also two strands here. Yeah, I think that's kind of the, the basic overview on the, on the sink bridle. Anybody got any questions about it? Or anything else for that matter? I'm always fair game. Well explained.